Just because an archaeologist finds something doesn't automatically mean that they understand it. An archaeologist can look at an object, measure it, and weigh it, but often they can only guess at its true purpose. Occasionally, further investigations only serve to generate more questions than answers. Everything you're about to see in this video is a fantastic archaeological discovery, but also something of a mystery both to the people who found it and the experts who had the chance to study it since. The identity of the screaming mummy has puzzled researchers ever since it was discovered at Deir el-Bahari, close to Luxor in Egypt, in 1886. The contorted face of the mummy strongly suggests that the unfortunate person died in a lot of pain, and the fact that the limbs were bound in leather and then wrapped in sheepskin suggests that the people who interred it considered the cadaver to be unclean. For a long time, archaeologists and historians believed that this person might have met their end through an act of poisoning. But a more recent theory is even more grisly and would give the body a very good reason to be screaming. The body is male and has traces of natron salt poured into its mouth. Modern forensic examinations have proven that the body was hanged rather than being poisoned. And based on that, along with DNA testing evidence, it's now thought that these are the remains of the son of King Ramses III. Historical records state that he was caught plotting to murder his father and seize the throne, and was sentenced to death by hanging as a result. Perhaps this ancient mystery has finally been solved. Another astonishing ancient Egyptian discovery happened at the site of Abydos in 2019. And if the experts working there are right about what they found, they may have located a previously unknown royal palace that was once the personal home of the Ramses II, considered by many to be the greatest of all the pharaohs of the ancient kingdom. It was an American team from the University of New York that was responsible for the discovery. After a prolonged search within the Abydos region, it was thought that the area had been mapped and explored thoroughly in the past, but the entrance to the palace was concealed behind a funerary temple. The discovery of a cartouche gave the first clue to the existence of the palace. Cartouches are a specific type of hieroglyphic used exclusively to refer to royalty. This cartouche was unmistakably that of Ramses II. After doing further digging work, they located a large hall with columns bearing inscriptions of the pharaoh. Some further blocks bearing engravings of stars are thought to have once been part of the roof. How has a palace so important managed to hide in plain sight for such a long time? The palace isn't the only incredible discovery to come from Abydos in recent years. In November 2016, archaeologists located the site of a mud brick boat chamber that appears to have served as the place of burial for a king's funeral bout around 3,800 years ago. The boat was the only real water vessel in the burial chamber, but for some reason, it was accompanied by drawings of a whole fleet of similar boats all over the walls. It's likely that the boat belongs to a king from the 12th dynasty area, known as the Senwosrit III, on account of the fact that this tomb has been located nearby. The site could have been found a lot earlier. British archaeologist Arthur Weigel spotted something unusual here in 1902 and started digging. But the roof collapsed as his team was working on excavating the chamber and so they gave up and left it alone. Boats like this were expected to animate in the afterlife and carry the deceased ruler on the voyage through eternity. Although to find one surrounded by so many drawings is unique, we don't know what this boat did to merit such special treatment. A river drying out usually isn't a good thing. When the Shamala River in Karnataka, India dried out due to a combination of overuse of the water and a prolonged drought, the consequences for the local ecosystem could have been disastrous. Instead, it allowed us an insight into the distant past. And quite a shocking one at that. As the water ebbed away, it revealed more than 1,000 Shiva Lingas carved out hundreds of years ago all along the bed of the river. The site is now known as Saharasra Linga, 
a Sanskrit word that literally translates a thousand Shiva Linga. Each one of them is a representation of Shiva, the Hindu deity. Normally, such symbols are seen in temples and shrines, but it's clear that no temple or shrine ever stood there. It's thought that they were likely carved during the time of Shadishvareya Varma, who was the king of Sirsi kingdom between 1678 and 1718. What isn't known yet is why this site was chosen for the carvings and what purpose they may have served before the water came to reclaim the land. The history of the ancient peoples and cultures of South America is shrouded in mystery. We know very little about the Inca people and perhaps even less than that about people who came before them. That's why discoveries like the one that happened in 2008 in Huaca Pucalana, Peru, are so important, even if we don't understand them completely. The discovery was the mummy of a female believed to belong to the pre-Hispanic Wari culture that once lived on the land before the Incas. She was buried with a wide-eyed death mask and was found alongside two other adults and a child, possibly from the same family. Unfortunately, it's likely that the child was the victim of human sacrifice, perhaps to honor the dead adults. Testing carried out on the body indicates that it comes from approximately the year 700. It's the first fully intact worry burial site ever found within the region. Although this discovery tells us a lot about worry burial customs, there is still much to learn about their traditions and beliefs. Returning to Egypt, a discovery made in Everest in 2012 seems to confirm the existence of a practice that was previously thought to be a rumor or a myth. Archaeologists excavating a site came across 16 human hands divided between four pits in front of what's thought to be an ancient throne room. There were no left hands found, only right hands. They're approximately 3,600 years old and date back to a period when the Hyksos people ruled over a portion of Egypt close to Tel Eldaba. King Kayan was the ruler of the palace, and it's almost certain that the hands were severed as a tribute to him. Some historical records of the time indicate that the king would accept severed hands as a form of payment for gold reserves. The hands probably didn't belong to the people claiming the gold. Instead, they were presented by soldiers who would have severed them from an enemy of the king. They might have come from Egyptian people or from other enemies of the Hyksos from the Levant. Interestingly, there are records of this practice in the original Hyksos homeland of northern Canaan. It's also possible that they picked the gruesome practice up from the Egyptians. The existence of the Cockno Stone was well known in Scotland, but it spent a lot of the past century hidden from view. The 42-foot-long rock slab was first discovered in 1887 and became a tourist attraction, but it was reburied in 1965 to prevent the priceless artifact from becoming damaged by exposure to the elements and by people walking on its surface. As scanning technology has progressed a lot since then, it was due to be unearthed again last year for a high-resolution scan that may tell us more about the purpose and origin of this strange Neolithic work of art. There are more than 90 markings on the stone, mostly made up of cups and rings, although there's also a ringed cross and what appears to be a pair of feet with four toes on each foot. Similar designs have been found all over Europe dating back 3,000 years. But nobody has ever been able to determine their meaning or significance, as the Cockno Stone is one of the most complete and detailed artifacts. It may offer us the best possible chance of rediscovering the truth. When you first look at the Rani Kiva in Patan, India, you'll assume that it's an incredibly ornate and beautiful temple. You won't be far from the truth. It's not a temple in the truest sense of the word, though. It's a step well designed to preserve water for use during hot months and ensure the people who lived around it never went thirsty. Although several such sites exist, Rani Kiva is both the largest and the most visually stunning. There are four pavilions at each site, each one descending further below the ground and intricately decorated 
with more than 1,500 different sculptures. It's thought, but not proven, that the stepwell was built around the year 1032 under the instruction of Rani Udemate and in memory of Raja Bhimdev, the founder of the Solanki dynasty. Many of the sculptures are dedicated to the deity Vishnu, although there are also several dedications of snakes and nymphs within the levels where the water would have been at its deepest. The whole site was silted over by the flooding of the Saraswati River and stayed that way until the 1980s. But now it has been almost completely restored to its former glory. Our next discovery isn't just one potentially important ancient site, it's several. And they may all be connected in a manner that seems almost impossible. All over Europe, tunnels have been found, carved into the rock below various Neolithic settlements. All of them come from the same period of time, approximately 12,000 years ago, and all of them are very similar in design. That's despite the fact that they are as far apart as Scotland and Turkey. To some archaeologists, the similarity and spread of the tunnels can mean only one thing. At some point during ancient history, there was a network of underground tunnels that ran through almost the length and breadth of Europe, like a secret superhighway. Confusingly, in some places, the tunnels become so narrow that they measure just 30 inches across, barely enough room for a small person to wriggle through. In other places, they open out into halls and chambers, some of which have primitive seating. Some more fanciful researchers have speculated that they might represent gateways to the underworld, but it's more likely that they were built to allow humans a way of escaping from predators or simply traveling in relative comfort when the weather wasn't good. We can't go quite as far as describing what was found at the ancient site of Farash in Iran in 2014, an aqueduct, but it would be accurate to call it a water system. That's an impressive technological achievement considering the water pipes and other artifacts that make up the site are about 5,000 years old. It's a well-documented fact that the ancient Persians were among the first and most accomplished with all the ancient aqueduct builders, so it might be that the Farage site is an example of them honing and developing their skills. In basic terms, the system consists of one small pool and a long pipeline made of earthenware. The pipeline is, in fact, so long that the source of water isn't immediately apparent, and archaeologists are still working through the process of carefully excavating the pipe before a planned new dam is built. When that happens, the site will be flooded, and the priceless ancient site will to all intents and purposes be lost forever. At the very top of Mount Numerit in Turkey, a location that involves climbing a little over 7,000 feet to reach, you'll find a series of large statues surrounding a tomb. We know that the tomb is approximately 2,100 years old, but we don't know why it was built in such a hard-to-reach location, or who it was made for. Most historians agree that the occupant was likely an ancient ruler, but we don't know which people he ruled over. The obvious answer is King Atiochus, Theos of Comagen, as a statue of his likeliness exists at the site, surrounded by further sculptures of giant heads and animals. The identity of the other giant heads is unknown, and the reason that we can't definitely say that the tomb belongs to the king is that his burial chamber has never been found, despite every piece of evidence at the site seeming to point to him being buried there, the chamber itself is still hidden from archaeologists. Is the entire site a ruse of some kind, like one big ancient joke? Or is the tomb buried deep inside the mountain somewhere? In ancient times, when crops failed or droughts occurred, the thing to do about it was to pray to whatever gods you believed in an attempt to curry their favor any way you knew how. Those customs probably explain the existence of this 3,800-year-old mural found in Peru during 2019 at the Vicama site. The most compelling aspect of the mural is a half-human, half-toad figure positioned above a human face. The Andean people who probably created the mural used toads to represent water, and so this has been interpreted 
as a depiction of humans waiting for the rain to come. The fact that it's accompanied by a representation of four human heads surrounded by snakes seems to indicate that all wasn't well in the area at that time. And so there may have been a severe drought or a famine occurring. If the dating is accurate, the mural would have been made at around the same time this civilization disappeared. The seemingly sudden disappearance of these ancient people has always been considered something of a mystery. Now, maybe we finally have found a reason for their disappearance. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.